Thank you, Rowan. And um, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, very nice to see you. Thank you very much, Rowan, for uh, hosting us and welcoming us here. And it's great to see so many people here on this particular subject. Last year, as you will surely recall, uh, saw the report of the government's Green Finance Task Force and its extensive recommendations on how to green the financial system in the UK. And this spring, we look forward to the government's Green Finance Strategy coming out, accompanied as it will be by the establish establishment of the new Green Finance Institute, which will promote the UK, of course, and catalyse the transition to green finance in the UK, um, and we hope the global financial system. And I think these facts in themselves are one marker of how far we have come in the last few years. Clearly, there are great expectations of what is still a relatively specialist area of finance. But if it's going to fulfil its potential, green finance, green, blue, sustainable, whatever you want to call it, which is allocatable finance, it, it's so much in demand from the world's investing institutions, it requires good data and much more to, of it. Good data needs good science, so we can readily see the need for what the, special the Spatial Finance Initiative is aiming to do. Indeed, the task force report last year highlighted climate science as an urgent need, and Ben has chaired that group. So again, well done, Ben, on getting us here today. We might give you a bit of a clap, actually, Ben, for having done a fantastic job. And He's such a modest chap, he's looking shyly downwards. Um, and this is important, not only because the ambitions of the Paris Agreement require much urgent investment, there are also a host of other developments aiming to spur along this transformation here in the UK as elsewhere. I, I was in Leeds yesterday, we had two fire alarms during the course of the day, which is amazing, um, as was Minister Claire Perry for a very well-attended conference looking at how local communities can develop local energy and local finance solutions another of the task force report's key areas of recommendation. And Claire Perry has joined us later this morning. She clearly thinks this is very important too. And market participants are integrating ESG metrics at a rapid rate into their portfolio strategies, increasing the demand for green investment product. I've lost track of how many trillions are now meant to be allocated towards ESG investments around the world. What we know is that the trillions there are not met by a supply of green product on the other side. The current outstanding in the green bond market, currently around 500 billion against the trillions on the other side. But the rubber really hits the road when it comes to integrating climate science data and risk analysis into financial decision making. And this is an area where the insurance industry, I think, is somewhat further down the path than any other financial sector. So it's fitting we're meeting here. And thank you again, Rowan, for the leadership that you have shown in this space. Data is the lifeblood of all finance. It enables the efficient allocation of capital. We need data. We bankers, insurance investors, we need data. It's also clear that the finance system is yet to integrate fully data about climate risk, both in terms of exposure to current climate events, but also to likely future changes. We know it's out there, we just don't know how to put it in. And one of the key challenges is getting to the right level of data in assessing climate financial risk. For example, the auto industry does not have the same risk profile as shipping or agriculture or clothing or mining. It needs different data. Actually, the auto manufacturers don't even have the same profile as the auto parts suppliers and dealerships, relying as they do today on supplying and servicing cars with 20,000 parts as opposed to the new electric cars which are going to have 2,000. Even then, risk profiles within industries will differ by region depending on different manifestations of changing climate. VW is in a different position from Volvo. The Bank of England only this week held an excellent climate science to finance risk seminar for central banks and commercial bankers when a number of these issues were identified. Short-term risks, no longer 20 years away in the future, short-term risks which can see changes affecting business in years, not decades. And why a spatial finance initiative? Well, it will have an explicit focus on applying advances in earth observation and data analysis to financial services. It aims to bring together world-leading science, the technical and engineering prowess of our space and data scientists, and financial service exports. I must have lifted that from somewhere. It reads very well indeed. <laughs> Crucially, it will work to deliver practical products and services to be used by the financial services sector. As I said earlier, this aligns exactly with the Green Finance Task Force recommendations, which set out the imperative of translating climate and weather data into the risk modeling framework used by the wider financial system. 
we can see applications of the Spatial Finance Initiative, for example, on TCFD, aligning well under the umbrella of this new Green Finance Institute, and I am greatly looking forward to seeing the results which follow. Ladies and gentlemen, the future is green and the future is glorious. So let's embrace the direction it is taking us in and let's have a great day. Thank you very much indeed.